Are we back? Club 520 Podcast. I'm the host. My name is DJ Wells. To my far left, resident chef, Bishop Greenleaf, my boy B. Hen. How you what? What's good, master? I see you got the good shoes on today, man. Yeah. When the guests come, you put the heat on. Is it? Yo, yo, fuck with us when the guests ain't here? Yeah, flip flops for (laughs) y'all. What a dick. (laughs) (laughs) To my immediate right, my boy, Young T, Young Nacho. How you what? Chilling, bro. Uh, By the doors again? Yeah, I had. These was by the garage door. Oh. We ain't even go- <laughs> Y'all don't even know where the garage door is. Yeah, they really make- turn that into like a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They about to know. About to know. Last but not least, my media left, you know what I'm saying? We got a guest. Love having guests, especially Indiana kids, Midwest kids in the building. You know what I'm saying? Hooper, philanthropist, foundation owner. We're going to talk about all these things with my dog. GR3, how you feeling, man? Appreciate you That's pulling good. up to 520, my boy. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all having me. I seen what y'all doing. I had to check. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I know y'all got a little bit of a relationship going on, but before we get into the episode, look, you see this table, it's real bare, cameraman going through some stuff. That's why, the sponsorship. See, if you put a sponsorship, we can get this laptop popping real nice, get this table going, and our cameraman will have his balance back. Shout out to my man behind the lens doing this thing. But before we get into today's episode, I got to talk to you, you know what I'm saying? You came to 520 during March. It's March Madness going on, you know what I'm saying? We know you little, you went a little bit farther in the tournament than Teague did over here. <laughs> But I got to ask you, you know what I'm saying, a biased question. Do you believe that was a foul? That wasn't no foul. That wasn't no Everybody foul? The block wasn't no foul. Everybody know what you're talking about. Yeah, you the the block. <laughs> we ain't even got to explain, but you know All what I'm Michigan saying? Michigan fans. Yeah. Michigan fans, no. Y'all still feel that. Too bad. I don't care. Um, <laughs> national championship. We're going to get into that, but that it was a crazy play. Hand straight up. He went to go get the block on Peyton Seaver, called the foul, free throws, changed the game. How shitty he or like salty was y'all in that moment? Because everybody looked at it and said, that ain't no fucking foul. <laughs> During the moment, I just I looked at Trey's face and he was pissed. Like he was shaking his head. I, I forgot what he said to the ref, but I was thinking next play because Trey just had hit that shot against Kansas the mm-hmm. game before, I think, or two games before. So I'm like, oh, we could still get back in it, you know. So my mind was just like, all right, we could still win win this game, you know. Yeah, I, I have to say, I, I, I'm sorry to bring that up, but that's Louisville fan. It's one of the few things I got to hold on to, you know what I'm saying? They try to take that championship away from us and act like we didn't all watch that fucking game on Monday night. Quit playing with us. Because y'all cheaters. So what? <laughs> I hope we did cheat. I hope everything that they said was true. Shout out to Niel Money. We've been on that type of time. Man, but you know, typically we ask, especially when we get hoopers on the show, that origin. Shit, we know your origin, man. Like, how was it to grow up, you know what I'm saying, as the son of Big Dog, the legend, especially in the 219? Like, how was that, like, influential in your upbringing? Obviously, with that being your pops and growing up kind of in the NBA. Yeah, you know, it's it's a blessing, for real. Um, that's how I met T, for real. He he knew my pops and, and stuff when we was on the Pacers. But yeah. um it's a blessing. Like I grew up, I seen cars, I seen hooping. Um, I remember one time he was with the Bucks and I'm in practice. I was a little little kid, so I'm running on the floor. And um George Carl, he cuts me out, like, man, get get your son off the court. You know what I'm saying? Like, get him off the court. <laughs> at the practice, we in the car, and my, my pops let me drive. So I'm in the steering wheel like this on his lap. And uh I look over and there's somebody, it was uh, I think Tim Thomas just was flying past. And then my pops rolled his window down, and I seen Sam, Sam Cassell. And imagine seeing Sam Cassell as a little kid. You see his little face. <laughs> you, see his face. you see his face as a little kid. I'm scared as hell. <laughs> and my pops oh. never let that down. My pops always joke about that. Like, man. And that's my guy. That's Uncle Sam, man. But oh, my man. pops never let that down, man. Like, you scared my son. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Sam Cassell had the saw mask on early. <laughs> Hell no, man. Uh, I'll never forget that day, though, That's man. for real. But, um, you know, it was that's stuff like that. You know, I was I was in NBA practices. You know, I, I got to see my pops pull up in, in different cars and stuff. So my, my, my mind was always focused on what I wanted, you know, and pops never influenced me to, you know, because I played football. I played different sports. Mm-hmm. He never was like, all right, you got to play basketball, you know, until I got to high school. It was clear, like, oh, this, this y'all's fire. Like, what you doing? But uh, but yeah, nah, man, I, I can't I can't complain. You know, obviously he was traveling. He won a ring with the Spurs. Mm-hmm. Um, I got to see a lot and and really follow his footsteps in terms of the hooping world. I was gonna ask you about that. I was gonna say, you know, what I'm saying a lot of people who don't even have no credentials and niggas who just be on Instagram clicks all they be pressuring their firstborn kids to fucking get on the basketball court. Did you have that type of pressure? Or was it just like he let you fuck with it, but then it came time and just like, nah, son, you 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 don't see what I see. Like we about to get to work type shit. Yeah. No, I'm laughing because I remember I was going to high school 
And I was playing football still up until eighth grade. And my pops was like, I'll give you a cell phone if you stop playing football. <laughs> <laughs> but it was clear, no, and, and it was just a joke, but it was clear I was I was better at basketball and that was my path. And Pops was right, you know, obviously. Yeah. Um, but no, nah, I remember playing football. I used to be a receiver and I was nice, you know, but I was like, no, no, basketball. Was you probably was crazy at what? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, how tall were you in eighth grade? I was probably like, nah, eighth grade. Six two, six three. Uh, yeah. yeah, you was probably cold. Six, yeah, two, you six, was two. big in a bitch. Yeah, I was, man, <laughs> six I was, three I receiver in eighth grade. Like back then, with one hand, you know, and, and I yeah. was out there, you know. But I was like, man, this ain't my sport though, because it got time for practice, and it's like them them drills with his head on. It's like, <laughs> yeah. all right, it's time to go head on against a linebacker or somebody. You got to yeah. square up. I'm like, nah, this. Ain't Nah, I'm cool off that too. Football was never for me. <laughs> I was a buck thirty in high school. Six That's one crazy, one thirty. Bro. Dog, listen, I, I grew up playing baseball and I'll take a fastball to the rib cage before I catch a motherfucking up the middle linebacker yeah, to the yeah. nah dog. Yeah. Like I don't see how people play football and wake up and play that shit the next day. Yeah, no way. Yeah, that shit. You gotta crazy. be built for it, bro. Brother, my brother played. We we opposite. My brother six six one. Like 300 pounds, linebacker. He uh, oh, yeah. XFL right now. Oh, damn. Um, yeah, he playing for St. Louis, the same team with AJ uh, McCarron, the quarterback. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, I've been checking that out. But yeah, we complete opposite growing up. He was wrestling football. It got to a point, I'm like, nah, yeah, we, ain't, we ain't fighting no more. <laughs> you see my brother. Yeah, for sure. Oh, nah, that, that, that's great. You said you tell your little brother, hey, look, we, yeah. we cool on the hands. <laughs> damn, so obviously, you know what I'm saying? He put the ball in your hands, you get to playing. You know, since so before we get to your college and high school days, how was AAU for you? Because you had you had some young hitters in your team, but you came to a time period where high school basketball was really getting its uh, shine, especially on social media. And y'all SYF team was crazy. Yeah, no, SYF was y'all was crazy. cheating. We, <laughs> y'all was cheating. T, we just had a lot of talent over in Gary. And Brandon Dawson was on our team. We was naming a couple of Mitch McGarry. Um, off oh, NBA players, by the way. Yeah, all NBA players. Um, but before that, a lot of people don't know I was born premature. So I was born three pounds, four ounces. And I spent two, two months in the incubator as a kid. And Pops Damn. gave me a Purdue basketball, like one of the little basketball, and put it in the incubator. So for two months, that's where I had the basketball in there. So I tell, started telling people that's when I start, first started hooping. As Damn. A kid, you know what I'm crazy. saying? So it's just in me. Damn, you was in that motherfucker for two bucks? For two months. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, you yeah, you ain't had no choice but the hoop. Right? <laughs> nah, no for real. Yeah. He threw that basketball in there like... Yeah, that no nah, choice. that's why he came to you. He was like, all right, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'll all let right, you do no. your thing, but uh, <laughs> yeah. time to return that investment, son. <laughs> did, y'all win, did y'all win any big tournaments when he was in uh, SYL? That's yeah, why we, we used to... Uh, that was before, because I think we we was Under Armour and... Um, Ooh. They was Nike when they was, uh, y'all was talking about the Robin yeah, Humble yeah. team and yeah. all that. Then we switched over to Under Armour. And I remember we would, used to go to Florida, all them tournaments. We was running through all them tournaments, you know what I'm saying? But we wasn't EYBL. Nigga, what shoes was you hooping in? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you? Man, the Under Armour, when them B. Jennings first came out. Oh, <laughs> the patent leather toes. They, they threw us the B. Jennings, man. Oh, damn, <laughs> G. That's fucked yes, up. <laughs> I almost signed with Under Armour. Oh, but I had rolled my ankle so bad in them. They ain't had no like. Stability. Thank God. Me and I. <laughs> I would have. I would have rocked them. <laughs> them curries are nasty. Hey man, Shit, it, I ain't never seen them. It really. makes me nah, so bro, upset that was... Steph is one of the coldest niggas to touch a basketball, and he got a shoe that we will never touch again or touch the first time. Nah, that's why I asked you what shoes you were wearing, bro. Because that's a crazy yeah. circuit to be on. Yeah, nah. Nah, Under Armour was popping though. That circuit was crazy. Yeah, yep. I'm talking about the, what the gear and shit. Oh, yeah. Bro. Niggas right. would have rather had hooped in some Nikes then. You yeah, know what I mean? Right. Yeah, because you could wear Nikes off the court. Ain't no Under Armour <laughs> shoes you was going to wear off that court. Nah, nah, you got to wear the runners or whatever. Oh, flip-flop me. Flip-flop me. No sock. <laughs> <laughs> what was one of your toughest matchups in the uh, AAU that you can remember? Yeah, you, uh, Shabazz, Shabazz Muhammad. Mm, Baz Muhammad. He was 22. Man, he oh, was me. Bazo. Every time. Baz, yeah. Every time we used to run into him in championship games. I was up. So, uh, but yeah, that's that's who I remember. Oh, okay. That's one of the names you forget about. Like, mm-hmm. it wasn't too far ago, but he was a problem in high school. But then we remember. He was old. Yeah, he was big in the motherfucker. Yeah, he, he had played that. with Bazo in Minnesota, right? In Minnesota, yeah. yeah for a year, yeah. My rookie year. Yeah, he mm-hmm. had that Joel and B passport. Yeah, yeah. Man, he was <laughs> crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> they was he, but was he like way older or y'all just texted? Nah, he was. Nah, he, was he was two years older, I believe. Yeah, he was like older. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he came out with 
He one of the OG holdbacks in who? <laughs> yeah, he was a double holdback. <laughs> he reclassified and got held back. <laughs> Bob's my guy, too. I, I see. <laughs> he is my guy, though. I mess with him. He cool as hell, but damn. he was old. Oh, damn, that's crazy. Because you know what's crazy? I went to a tournament to watch him play at North Central. And he was dunking on everybody. everybody. And I'm that like, man, yeah, man, I'm man, like, bro, was out here. That nigga was huge, I'm like, bro. He was a man child, bro. And then when they came out, I was like, all right, I get it. That's hell. He was a man. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, you know what? And I'm going to shift this to the 219, you know what I'm saying? That EC team where they had Angel Garcia. Y'all not telling me Angel Garcia was a high school player, bro. I still don't believe it, bro. Where are the documents? He was, nasty. He was cold, bro. He was a grown man. He had just got off a shift at the steel mill, bro, and put on that red jersey <laughs> and gave niggas work. Damn, Angel was nice. <laughs> he was cold. Nice. But yeah, man, high school, you know what I'm saying? You said Pop started telling you, hey, it's time to really get it in. Like, what was your like, what was that switch like for you when it became basketball? It's kind of like fun. He like, nah, we, we, I'm gonna show you, you know, see how I would. Now I'm about to show you how to get it in. Like, was you going through them type of drills with practice or he was just letting you rock out with your yeah. coach? Nah, um, man, he, I would go visit my pops in the summer, me and my brother for two weeks. And that's when I remember about him. He was strict on two things. You got to do your cardio once a day for 20 minutes. And then you got to keep that pace up to a certain level. And then you got to uh, eat right. It was grilled chicken, broccoli, salmon, something. You got to eat right for lunch. So that, as a kid, you know, so that instilled, instilled to me, like, all right, this is what I need to be doing to get to the league. Or Damn, that's how you yeah. keep your body right. But he said he learned that from Ray. Like, Ray Allen was was big on all of that back with the Bucks and everything. So, But he didn't learn that type, type of stuff till he got a certain age, you know. So he spread that knowledge to me. I was, I was appreciative of. Um, but he came to watch me work out one time in high school. <clears throat> and uh, I used to get up at 5.30 in the morning, and a lot of people kind of heard this story, but this this like what I tell all the young kids, this is this what got me on, and this is what got me my scholarships. But I used to wake up at 5.30, my college, my high school coach was honking his horn in my driveway. My mom, you know, you met my mom. Yeah, yeah. My mom's like, boy, get your ass up. You better get up <laughs> yeah. at 5.30. So I hop in this car. We at the gym by 5.45. I get a 1,000 shots up before school every day. Damn. Um, by the time sophomore year came in high school, I had my license. I beat my high school coach up to the gym. I beat him to the gym every single day. And um, I used to turn on the, the lights. That's my favorite sound. A thousand shots every day. Damn. And in the sophomore year, I had a scholarship from Michigan and Colorado. You know, all the schools I had scholarships from. But I that's what I tell the kids, man. A thousand shots a day, one hour in the morning per day. That's all it took. You was on the gun, right? I was on the gun. Yeah. Uh, I was about for to minute, say. For a minute. Pops came up there, rebounded for me. Okay, I didn't know if you had one of your niggas rebounding for you. I about to say, shout out to the rebounding yeah. nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, a thousand rebounds. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> G got up working out with Ben Wallace, nigga. <laughs> And that, Fuck, was, nigga. that was that was because I used to shoot with with two hands. So in eighth grade, you know how as a kid yeah. we just throw the ball up there. Yeah. So eighth grade, my my high school coach was like, "Yo, if you want to play, you gonna have to change your shot. Like you don't shoot with two hands. This the guy hand. This how you shoot." Mm. And I'm like, "Whoa!" So I got I just looked him off. Like man, he don't know what he's talking about. In eighth <laughs> yeah. grade, you know, I'm like, I'm kind of nice. So I went all that. I'm like I'm kind of nice. And uh, man, I got in the gym a thousand shots per day, and it started working. Like I, I was able to control where the ball was going because you shoot with two hands. It's Spinning, it's twisting, yeah, it's just nasty. You get control, I would start hitting them shots. I'm like, whoa, this really worked. Thousand shots per day. That's what I tell the kids, man. Damn, I mean, that's some different type of dedication. Your dedication different, because I would have <laughs> never been. I was going to say, well, what time did you get out to work out? <laughs> nigga, I didn't go work out. <laughs> nah, nigga, what? I want to know <laughs> shit. You like that, though. Yeah, what did. time you was like you it. done? Move back. My back I was done. Oh, you good? Yeah, you just said, move back to it yep, so we can hear you better? Yep, this way. Yes, sir. Yep. He said, "What time was he done? He was going to high school." Yeah, so no, nigga, yeah, I'm saying school. though, five thirty. <laughs> yeah. So what time did you get that thousand shot up? Though? Seven, and then it was like fuck six fifty five seven. I remember I had it was Axe deodorant it was popular. Yeah. And all that. I used to spray that shit on my hand, get the scrub real quick. I had five minutes. School started at seven fifteen. Oh, gee, so you I was, was a done. nasty. Seven <laughs> fifteen. Oh, hey, I had gee. to do it. <laughs> Spanish bath, hey, boy. Hey, I had to do what I had to do. Quick bird bath. Think... Quick bird bath. And... Hey, rubbing the axe on the heads is crazy. <laughs> he was spraying that motherfucker. Bro, they used to do that at Pike, man. Y'all niggas was sick. All the little hey, Spanish dudes. It's either that bro, or you got to sit all day. You ain't took no shower in class. I'm yeah, like, yeah, I knew who won for me then. <laughs> 
Hell no. Nah. My, yeah. oh, <laughs> my nigga did that every day. Hey, that, was your your yeah. Yeah. that was a young routine. That was your B.O. by the time you got <laughs> <laughs> My nigga did NIL in high school. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, oh, God. I wish that was out back then. Ask the I show. was show. love. A commercial hilarious. with the horse. <laughs> And you'd have had Old Spice on lock, my nigga. Man, what? <laughs> you would have been a fucking superstar. <laughs> nigga, get that on camera, him doing that every day, bro. bro uh, imagine weird. a nigga taking an axe and hitting it with the LeBron oh. hand toss. Bro, it would have went viral. You wouldn't even need the NBA. <laughs> Y'all crazy. Ah, uh, shit. That's crazy. But that dedication different, though. Nah, for real. Nah, respect. Absolutely. Nah. Because like you said, sure. you made your own jump shot. Like, you had to go through and make your own jump shot to get to the next level. And like you said, that hard work and that dedication got you your offers. We're going to talk about some schools. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy how we got two Indiana All-Stars, you know what I'm saying, two pros in here that did not go to an Indiana school. Was there any Indiana school, you know what I'm saying, in particular that should have maybe yeah. recruited you but that didn't recruit you? <laughs> I got to look in the camera when I say yeah. this one. Nah, talk your nah, shit. Purdue, Purdue, I already know. We just already... <laughs> I would have went to Purdue for real. I, I ain't never said came out and said this, but oh. I probably would have went to Purdue. My pops was a legend there. Wore number thirteen. It's in a banner. I probably would have asked to wear number thirteen or thirty one or something. Yeah, it would have made a whole storyline. But God had better plans, you know. Absolutely. Michigan recruited me. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. Shout out to Tim. He gave me my my official visit. He recruit. He they was recruiting me. He uh, we went out to parties. Did all of that. Tim man, I, too. Yeah, man. I, I seen I had a great time. <laughs> Tim was a good part. Like he 18 a good year old or seven, you know, however old we was. I'm like, whoa, this is what college is like. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I go to Michigan, they on the roof. They on Wilder. they playing beer pong off the roof, jumping <laughs> off the roof, everything all weekend. I'm like, whoa, they party like this for basketball, football. That's how they get it in. Yeah. I'm gonna go here. <laughs> Going to them schools that got the duel, like the footballs lit in, the basketball lit hit different. Yeah. Especially in the, like in the Midwest, because them cold, the, the people, white people don't care about the cold. They gonna turn up regardless. <laughs> so you was in Ann Arbor and it was a fucking party because that's like the Bloomington of Michigan, but way better. Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, it in Michigan, it was it was a good time. The two years that I was there. If it wasn't Michigan, what school would you close to thinking about? Um, <clears throat> probably. Um, I don't know. For some reason, Colorado always stick in my mind. I kind of wanted to go further from from the crib. You okay. know, I didn't have Kentucky or North Carolina, but I had almost every other school. Really? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think I finished high school 17 in the country or something like that. Um, but IU didn't offer me. Purdue didn't offer me. It was a lot of schools that passed that's, up on me. That's crazy. Yeah. Man. That don't even make sense. Yeah, Purdue didn't offer me either. Yeah, Purdue didn't offer me. I thought I was going to. I thought I had an offer. Yeah, I thought I I committed. And they was like, you don't have an offer. (laughs) Lame ass (laughs) nigga. Oh, you know. Hey, I ain't know that, bro. I committed to Purdue. I did my nigga bad. I I committed to Purdue, but they told me, you don't got a scholarship, bro. (laughs) That's crazy. I was like, it's always up with Purdue. Well, Look, was, now he won't smoke. I did. <laughs> niggas wasn't even paying attention to him. Hey, listen, when he, they offered my little brother, I was like, why would y'all waste your time? <laughs> he said, hell no. He was over. hate. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> nah, nah yeah, for real. it's over. Bro, I committed, bro. They was like, ah, we're going to call you back. <laughs> like, but they called my dad like, we don't got a scholarship for him. They was like, oh, all right. So wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> And this is like, this is the summer of your junior year or your senior year already? This is my junior year. Your so junior year. come in early. Hold on, nigga. You called and said, hey, I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> I had just got all them scholarship offers. So I had got So all you just knew Purdue was I, I thought I had them in the bag. See? That's why I, I told like, you, I ass, get away down, from home. I just turned down Kansas, all them. I'm like, I'm going to go to Purdue. To go to fucking Purdue. That's crazy. You get on that. my fucking nerves, man. Yeah, them niggas. <laughs> <laughs> they literally told me, yeah, well, Stinger, you man. ain't got a scholarship, boy. So I was like, oh. <laughs> Did you have your hat ready? <laughs> I I, that's why I went to the other black and gold. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I, like, I can't right. go here. I'm going to go uh, to I'm going to wear these DMPs one way or another, yeah. nigga. That's funny. That's crazy. I mean, that's I, I just think that it's crazy that we look, especially now in the tournament, like we got so many kids from the city that be out here getting their shit off and they're not in any of the home schools. Yeah. Y'all should probably work on that shit. Like, Nigel Pack should have been at Purdue. Shout out to Nigel Pack. There's no reason these good ass players should not be escaping the state. In a, <laughs> in a dream scenario, IU would be a Nike school and have a coach that just recruited in like central Indiana and the region, and they could probably win a national championship every four or five years. 
if you just recruited in the bucket city. But fuck yeah. them. But Back Michigan, to, though, with them Jordans, it's over with. Hey, yeah, like, if I could good. come out of high school again, I probably would have went to Michigan. Michigan. For real? What? Jawan Howard, Jordans. He just said it was fun as hell. Hell yeah. That would have been a perfect match for you, too. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. And you went to a crazy situation because Michigan, they, they was already solid. And then, you know what I'm saying? Who who they came was, into Michigan with y'all? Because y'all had a whip. They was producing talent. Trey Burke and Tim was already there. Mm -hmm. Me, they started calling us the, the new Fab Five. They started calling us the Fresh Five. It was five freshmen that came in. Me, Karis Savert, Nick Stauskas, Spike Albrecht, and Mitch McGarry. Uh, so we came in and it was, the uh, I remember the first uh, like scrimmage we had against each other. The seniors, it was seven seniors. They looked at us and they was like, yeah, we about to smack them. We got on the court. Man, they seen who we was like quick. We started whooping their ass. We was up <laughs> yeah. like 12 quick. And uh coach was like, yeah, we got to switch something up. Seniors went to the coach and was like, I think we going to sit down. We going to take that role as leaders. <clears throat> they let all us freshmen <laughs> rock out, except for Karis. They was like, yeah, we going to redshirt him. B-Line was like, yeah, we going to redshirt him. Everybody was like, nah, Karis, nice. I don't know what you think it is. <laughs> and, uh, seniors went back to him was like, nah, we ain't redshirting Karis. He going to play. And that's when we just started all that's rocking hard. out after that. Yeah. That's love, bro. Yeah, that is. Yeah. That's I'm like sure that though. happens nowhere else. We came to, we came to <laughs> campus. I mean, my mama dropped me off, and I was like, man, where am I at? I ain't had, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, it was me and Mitch in the dorm. It was, he was my roommate. Karis and Spike was over here, and Nick. And I was like, man, it's all three of us in the dorm, right in the hallway next to each other. I'm like, man, we was having a good time. That's yeah. why we came into practice, started smacking them. Coach was like, yeah, we got to switch it up. <laughs> They're going to start. <laughs> nah, they just... I mean, of course, shout out to your coach, but at the same time, shout out to them, bro. Because that don't happen, bro. Yeah, that don't yeah. happen. So where they go to the coach and not, man, fuck these little niggas, yeah, man. They not taking my, my spots. That's yeah. my team. Yeah. <laughs> that's my team. Nah, yeah. For so sure. They all got real good job. Uh, Josh Bartlestein is, just got uh, promoted with the Suns. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's I, that I with the Suns. That's he good was, karma, he was, bro. He was, the, he was one of them seniors. Yeah. Um. So yeah, man, they they doing good things with their lives. That's hard, bro. They was always smart. It was a Another story too. We was the first one to have them slogans on your shirt, and we got to the um to the final four, and we had we own. So we was like, yeah, we come in the court and we switch on the light switch. We own. We turn on. Yeah. And uh, we was the first ones with the slogan. Adidas started selling them mugs. We created this by ourselves. Oh, they did by like ourselves. that. We went and printed them. The, the team went and printed them, and we oh. was just we was the only ones that had them. Adidas. The next game, March Madness, came out. Had the whole we own slogan. We ain't selling get that none money. of that money. We get nothing. All them scenes was business students and everything. You know, so uh, we yeah, know what's yeah. going on. We see yeah. firsthand, like it's over with. <laughs> they about to make millions off this shit. Man. We ain't get nothing. Damn, bro. NIL deals. Bro. Right. They, they millionaires now if they would have did that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Matt, Trey Burke, National Player of the Year. Millionaire. I mean, obviously he just made it to the league, but he would have been How cold was Trey Burke in college, bro? Cold. I mean, we know because we watched him, but you, you know what I mean? You rocked with him. So yeah. how? What was he like? I I personally ain't know Trey when I pulled up. I oh, ain't okay. know, you know, a little dude from Ohio. You know, I'm like a little light-skinned dude. He got tattoos, you know, corn rolls. Or, you know, I'm like, man. He, who is this kid? He started, <laughs> he started hooping. We call him like AI. He's just cold with the, you know, just yeah. magic with the ball. And back then, you know, you get to the league, you know, people taller and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. back in college, man, he used to get all his shit off. He was cold. But to see a player like that, National Player of the Year, uh, it was Denard Robinson at that time at Michigan mm -hmm. and Trey mm -hmm. Burke. You couldn't go to the cafeteria. You couldn't go to Wendy's. If one of them was over there, it was like, yeah, it's a wrap. That's hard. Yeah, I knew he had crazy. a big... That's why I asked you about him. I mean, shout out to everybody else, but I knew he was like a big deal. You know yeah, he I was mean? that nigga. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Damn, I forgot to know Robinson. What was his nigga named? Shoelace or something like Shoelace. that? Yeah, he had it cracking. Yeah. Damn, both of them on... Them niggas on should have been throwing at the parties. the same time. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so crazy. Like, we talk about the NIL money, like, especially at fucking Michigan. I, uh, niggas be hating on Drew Timmy, but I understand. I'm seeing the Gonzaga too, boy. I'm making way more bread living on campus than I would pooping in the league as a second round pick. I, that yeah. changes everything. Change a lot. You do though. Hell yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, unfortunately, we talked about what happened, but how was it making it to the Final Four? Because, like, a lot of people don't get to experience that run in the NCAA tournament. Like, what's that feeling like? That's probably, like, probably on part of paying, like, the best tournament in the world, low key, because it's not like the NBA playoffs. No, nah. nah. It's crazy. It's fans from everywhere, obviously, showing up. National championship game, playing in front of 75,000 at the Georgia Dome. I'm, I'm in warm-ups. 
almost airball my first shot because everybody looked like ants in the background. You know what I'm Damn. saying? I ain't never experienced that playing on the court. Everybody else looked like ants. You know what I'm saying? It's usually the other way around. The yeah. crowd looking at you. They like, yeah. So I'm like, it threw off my whole, you know what I'm saying, my shot. Yeah. Um, but you you get to the final four, you get all the fresh gear, you know, whoever, whatever team, you, whatever, uh, whoever sponsor you, sending you all that pack of all the good gear. Mm-hmm. Um, the plane is different. You pull up, you know what I'm saying? Everything, that per diem is different. Per diem different. <laughs> Everything different. You get to that final four. That's hard. But I'll never forget coming back from the championship. We had all the fans that was waiting on us as soon as we we had lost though, but all the fans was there afterwards and and it's like winning the championship when you yeah. get back and it's all the students just there like 100,000 people just in the in the, in the streets I so imagine yeah. going to school that big Damn, bro, and bro. That's when, uh, my teammate Spike Spike Albrecht um he tweeted Kate up there and when they took the national championship <laughs> so he got back he was the man on campus then mm. he had all the little chicks on campus uh, yeah he he <laughs> got fucking that's hurt. What I'm <laughs> He had Trey Burke because that's Trey was in foul trouble. He had seventeen as the backup point guard. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Oh, I fucking remember. He was hooping. Yeah, he, yeah. Was hooping. Yeah. he tweeted K up there afterward was the man. Uh, he hard for that. <laughs> I was I was at the crib shitty because I was like, all right, Trey Burke in foul trouble. I'm like, who the fuck is this little white dude killing us? He they was going fire. He man, was going bro. nuts in the first half. Yeah. I was pissed. I'm looking at Russ Smith like, if you don't wake the fuck up, <laughs> he playing two one nine. Yep, crown point. Damn, Damn. see, yep, yep, yep. running rapid. Yep. Damn, I, that's man. crazy. All right, so you know, you kind of like, um, with you going into the draft situation, you know what I'm saying, you had a chance to leave earlier than you even expected for school. Just tell us about that process of how you, like, you know, that summer going into your sophomore year, you kind of like, oh, damn, I could have been his. And then you're like, fuck it, I'm going back to school. How was that process for you thinking that out? And then when did you decide, all right, I'm going to go ahead and bounce? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't really thinking about it when I... When I first got to Michigan, I was just trying to, I was trying to go there and be on the team, you know, mm-hmm. not be a role player. I was obviously trying to start, but I didn't expect for things to start moving like that. We made it to the national championship. We lost. Next day, they like, yo, you leaving or not? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the option. Like, it's the next morning when you wake up in a hotel, they like, we going to leave or we not, you know? And I hadn't discussed it with my family. Nothing. I remember talking to Pops, and I think I'm 18, 19 at the time, and he looked at me and he was like... I don't think you're ready yet. Mm. And I was like, I had to respect that because this is possibly been at that level or whatever. <clears throat> and back then for me, I ain't know. If I would have knew what I knew now, yeah. we would have had a discussion. Yeah. Had to <laughs> you should have called me. I was like, hey man, it's time to take off. <laughs> Cause you know, you know how we talk, you know, like the difference between going top 10 and going, I went 40, yeah. second mm-hmm. round. So the difference between that right there is four years, damn near oh, like man. Yeah. You know, what automatic bread. Nice bread locked in. Woo. So yeah, I get second round Minnesota. I ended up uh, Wiggins was that's when the whole LeBron trade went down. Wiggins came to Minnesota, and me and Levine got drafted to Minnesota to two. So I was the third or fourth wing on that on that spot. Mm-hmm. They had to let me go, and then I had to make the team. Uh, the Sixers picked me up, and the, through the waivers, I made the Sixers team. And then my whole career was just like like that, and it could have been different. Off a top ten, uh, you know what yeah, I'm saying? It, it would have been totally different because yeah. you you given a bigger opportunity when you pick ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even yeah. like if he went to camp, he would have went to camp with Minnesota and he killed Levine because Levine wasn't good his first year. He was good, but you kill. It's like okay, you kill him, but shit, he ain't about to play. We got to give him a chance. We picked right. him eight. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, <clears throat> but I was, I couldn't believe he went back to school. I was like, what yeah. the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so I made that decision to go back. Go ahead. What you? Nah, I was just, I was saying with bro. I was yeah. like, well, shit, bro. Like I told you, bro. Bro must have had that thing back at school and shit. He wasn't trying to let go yet. He was in love. <laughs> yeah. That Michigan love. That fuck Arbor love was Yeah. That yeah. fuck nah. with that grip on G3. <laughs> 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 it had to, bro. I was like, what? And then fucking life is good. And uh, like you said, if y'all coming home to love after a loss, I couldn't imagine the day to day at Ann Arbor. Ah, oh, he was probably living. My yeah. man. Yeah, nah, I really wasn't. I wasn't even thinking like that. Like, all right, we going top 10. Yeah. We out of here. You know, yeah. I was thinking more like, all right, I'm trying to line up what's best for me. Pop say, you know, I ain't ready. I'm trying to line up. All right, we're going to go back next year and kill. I come back to Michigan. I'm supposed to be playing the three. B-Line still got me at the three and the four. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I look up. I'm guard, guard Steven Adams one game. We play pick. I'm guard <laughs> Steven Adams. Yeah. I'm like, yo, nah, this ain't what I signed up <laughs> yeah, for. This ain't like. year two. You know how college coaches do. You know yeah. when, you, when, yeah. you get to, 
when you now she's going back or whatever, they got you in the bag. They like, okay, yeah. now we gonna get our plan straight. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's crazy how the game work. You know what I'm saying? And you and George was talking about that, but you know, and as I got older, I I learned how to I understood how you got to play the game. And yeah. As you become a professional, things change, and you got to let certain things go too. You know. That's a fact. Now, nah, but hold on, before we move on, man, you got to talk about that Steven Adams matchup, bro. <laughs> I just you ain't got to go in deep detail, but man, I remember. Did they it keep a, you on, bro? It, was a free, it kept me on, bro. It was a free throw line. Oh, uh, box out. out of pocket. You know, I, I, I'm trying to box out Stephen Adams on a free bro, throw line, won, bro. bro. So on, I turn dude. around and go like this. You know, I ain't yeah. boxing like that. Yeah. I turn around and go like this. He wasn't, he, he, all that. He wasn't going. He was the strongest <laughs> humans in the world, bro. To have him playing <laughs> Stephen Adams going. was a joke, bro. Damn. You might as well have me on Stephen Nah, that. yeah, for real. It don't matter who you, he's too strong, bro. What's crazy is we uh was in the bubble and Steven, he just plays the ukulele and yeah. stuff that night. He just a chill, he cool, cool dude. He cool be on that hell. court, man. He's strong as hell. <laughs> Damn, bro, life is peaceful. Who gonna fuck with Steven Adams in any aspect of life? Bro, he got 18 brothers and sisters. And they all be. <laughs> That's crazy. He didn't got beat up here. He don't care about nothing. <laughs> nah, the, the league is sweet. He have to move. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> be like, wow, <laughs> <laughs> the stretch four. Yeah, that's why I had that. <laughs> that's why I be understanding college players now that the portal's open. They be like, oh, why is everybody jumping in the portal? Because y'all don't know what be going on from year to year, bro. People got to make the best decisions for them as players. Coaches can leave with no penalty, but y'all be tripping when the kid make a good decision for him. If you have an issue with that, do you like, like they said, tournament? Because right now, every team that's good right now is because of transfers. Mm -hmm. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. So like you said, your first year in the league, you was in Minnesota. Like, that's crazy, because if you think about all those guys you talk about now, they're all in different situations right now. Did we all think the Levine was going to be close to better than Wiggins? I knew he was talented. I'm, you spoke in it early. I'll give you a prop. You did say that early. Yeah. I always thought he was nice, but I didn't think he was going to be as cold as Wig was. I always thought Wig was cold. Wig still yeah, Wig is cold. Oh, Wig for sure. Cold. Like, but that had to be the highest jumping team. Yeah, yeah, in the league, bro. Yeah, which yeah, all y'all. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wig and Zach on one team. Yeah, y'all wasn't winning shit, but <laughs> y'all was jumping high. Man, at the practice, we was having a crazy Man, dunk contest. I know it. Look, all oh, y'all fucking champions and shit. You got to let them jacket. Yeah, oh, yeah, Zach got one. Yeah. Wig wouldn't do it, but yeah, shit, yeah. that's scary. Yeah. Nah, that's crazy. But me and Zach, because we was drafted together, so we was just just home. We, we, that was the homie, man. We used to, I used to take water to his crib because I remember he wouldn't even drink no water. And then we would go to a restaurant. <laughs> he just fries, milkshake. So I'm like, you that's know, go back crazy. to the story with pops. So yeah, like, yeah, hey, man, you got to do this, you know. <laughs> At 19, you know, I'm trying to tell him. So we would just go back to the crib and play video games the whole day, hit the gym at night. And Zach was like that. He was a dog. And I knew Zach was going to be nice, just the yeah. fact that he had that in him. But to go back to what we were talking about, Trey Burke was that way. And when you had asked, when y'all asked me about Trey, um, Trey set the tone. And I was already getting up from high school like that. Mm -hmm. Trey set the tone for me saying in, in the gym at night. Trey would be in, that, in the gym till 3 a.m. Damn. Yeah. We would order the, um, you know, the little meal cards that you get yeah. at school. We order the meal cards, the pizza or whatever we get for free to the arena. And we like, yeah, drop it off here. We eat, go play video games. We right back out there at 3 a.m. Cause you know, we in the dorm, ain't nobody trying to stay in the beeline wouldn't let us stay in the uh, apartment. So we like, oh, man, damn. we in the dorms, we might as well stay in the gym the whole the whole yeah. night. We was in there all night. And that's yeah. where I got that from. That's crazy. Did you, when you was at Wake, you was just working out with the team, but you was doing your own nah, show? Nah, I, I lived in the gym in college. I, I, I didn't start, I took basketball serious when I got to college. In high school, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> But when I got to college, I lived in the gym. It was nothing to do at Wake Forest. So I shot 2,000 shots a day. Me and this dude named Gary Clark. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's all we crazy. did. I literally, I never went out for, I never went to, I went to two parties my whole time at Wake Forest. Damn. Yeah. Unless we went to a club after a game, we went to the end club like twice or something like that. But I never went out. Like, I didn't even talk. I walked around yeah. with my headphones on. <laughs> Talking to two people, James Johnson, Gary Clark. <laughs> <laughs> sure, if anybody on Wake Forest campus, they'd be like, that nigga Teague was probably weird. Like, yeah. I ain't speak to nobody. Football niggas, but what up? <laughs> <laughs> that was just me, bro. But <laughs> well, that's how I thought you was when, when we first met, because I ain't no T back then. I'm from Gary, and you know, y'all from, yeah. from down here. So I'm like, man. I ain't know you, you know, so it's, yeah. I had to introduce myself. And he thought like, he was nah, a weird ass nigga. Nah, <laughs> he like, nah, I ain't know if he was gonna mess with me or not, because I'm like, man, I'm from the G and he down here. And he yeah. like, nah, what up, G? I know your pops from back in the A, you know, yeah. ATL, you know, you yeah. be at the barbershop, blah, 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 because my pops stay in the A. So 
we was just chopping up then, but I was like, nah, bro, ain't gonna, he ain't gonna mess with nobody on the team. He's just gonna stay to himself. Yeah. Nah, that's, nah, it. that's usually he, how I am, but I was like, that's my yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> he off top. I was like, that's my man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy though, because you think about it like that sounds like real casual that y'all just saying that shit, but that's really incredible. The niggas really like lived in the gym. Like you yeah. have to be that dedicated to separate yourself <laughs> in them times and situations. But it's funny as hell just because you know what your demeanor, you acting like that makes so much sense. <laughs> it, it was definitely <laughs> it's just so on brand for that shit. Also, you know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta talk represent from the 219 right now. We got some things going on because the outside world disrespects Indiana. Y'all gotta claim the any animals, bro. We we gotta we gotta trace they they zip code and make sure that they not from the three one seven. But we gonna put them on the two one nine until I get this shit sorted out. Yeah. Cause nah. I get tired of when we go places and people we say any animals. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 that don't ain't do that shit. <laughs> nah, that's, that's cool. definitely not us. I, I, I won't. I won't. Yeah. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Love to two one nine, but you, I, I need you to speak to your people. Y'all gonna have to get to the bottom of that. I'm putting that on y'all. I'm not accepting that yeah, no I more. That's like weird. That. <laughs> <laughs> put put them in one of y'all. You know what I'm saying? Maryville, that guy's space. <laughs> To the niggas, uh, yeah, <laughs> Hobart. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can throw them off at Hobart, but yeah. y'all gotta, y'all gotta take care of the niggas, yeah. bro. We don't <laughs> that idiot of shit. That is not Indianapolis, bro. That ain't it. Huh? <laughs> Hell no. That's funny as hell, man. And so, like, you know what I'm saying? You make it into the league now as your relationship grows with your pops. Um, I mean, not grow, obviously, that's your dad, but like, it's this different talk now. All right, you growing, you got your own bread, you in the league. Is the conversations changing? Yeah. Um, obviously, yeah. he's still guiding you, but how did those conversations evolve? Yeah, I mean, throughout the years, they've just been evolving. I mean, um, finance talk, we talk about money. Uh, a lot of people don't know, my pops was the first one to ask for a $100 million. Yeah. Facts. And uh, I don't think he wanted to do it, but his agent at the time was like, nah, we're going to go push for this this 100 <laughs> And then the Bucks ended up giving him 68 you know, but but still to, to ask for it, he opened up that gate for a lot of people to go get that back. That's a fact. So, Shout out to Juwan um, Howard. Yeah, so I always got to keep that in the back of my mind. Is like, man, my pops really reinvented a lot of a lot of stuff, you know, and he was a dog. So, um, but outside of that, you know, I, I also respect who he is and as a father, and, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to lead because uh, I know what it take. We know what it takes to be in the league and nine months out your time, and then to to still be with the family and do what you got to do. I respect that for real. So. We talk about a lot of different stuff, and I got a daughter now who who five, so I need that guidance in my mm -hmm. life, you know, in times yeah, of all yeah. investments, you know, all all type of stuff. Yeah, that's fine because, like you said, you see your pops do it his way and the right way at the same time. So now it's like, all right, G, you in the league now. This conversation is different. Put your money here. Put your stuff here. Don't be asking me for no money because you're rich. I know how much money you make. You ain't getting no payday loans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, my pops is always good though because a lot of people they they really don't they think like we we. Me and my brother grew up with pops, and we was like really spoon fed. But I grew up my mom and my grandma. Mm -hmm. My dad did what he had to do; was on the road. We seen him when he could, yeah. and I respect that. But I grew up with my mom and my grandma, and <clears throat> we from they from the G, and it's like yes, sir, man. Everything we do is 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 the right way. You know, they ain't going for for nothing sloppy. Oh, mom, I so love, mom, yeah, <laughs> man. And uh, you know, she told me to go back to school when I left. She like you, you gonna go back to school and do that. And I just finished up Harvard Business School. Uh, so I went back and did that. And that's I've been dope. doing my thing. Appreciate uh, it. Hey, congrats, man. Yeah, I was going to get to that. that that's hard. Yeah. How was it going to school? Because, I mean, you know what I'm saying? The last time you went to school was a little different. <laughs> last time I went to school, I think it was, man, what, 2014. So I'm mm -hmm. like trying to back up. Like, I opened up a book. I'm like, man, it's been a minute. It was a bunch of reading and all that, but I knocked it out. I ended up getting number one in the class. So, hey, congrats, um, bro. Appreciate Shit, it. Appreciate hard. it. But I want to, you know, start my own business, open up business companies and all of that. Um, a lot of stuff I've been interested in. I've been knocking out throughout these past two years that I've been stepping away from the game since Sacramento. Um, take care of my daughter, but I got into real estate, crypto. I got a chance to learn all that stocks, you know, and really teach myself all, all this shit. And that's what's important, man. Like you see now, so many athletes, we don't hear too many of those typical stories of like athletes going broke no more because it's, it's draining. in. Like, I don't want to be on 30 for 30, but I got all these avenues and there's people to teach you. But like you said, you went back to school and you ain't go to Ivy Tech. No disrespect to Ivy Tech, but you went to the <laughs> fucking the <laughs> Ivy League. Like, I can only imagine the last time I went back and look at a fucking textbook. And like you said, when you was back in school, you was windmilling on shit. You, were, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You getting your grades in, but you weren't trying that <laughs> right. dean's list. Exactly. <laughs> but, exactly. That's hard. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. imagine going to school. D Man. Dog. I it was crazy though, because it's like, all right, y'all know Gillette Razor Saving, saving yeah. Company. Yeah. It's like, all right, we got to break down the company, look at a bunch of numbers, and it's like, what did they do that was different that made them successful? And like, when they shit wasn't selling, they cut the prices in half or they cut it down a certain amount. So 
it's just knowing how to operate that business and like how to because these folks talk about 200 million 300 million dollar companies like it's nothing nothing yeah you know the owner i knew i wanted to get into business be involved in all this stuff when the owner of minnesota his name glenn taylor but he he owned a recycling company yeah he come to the games every day laughing at us on the court you know just happy as hell (laughs) just like i'm like whoa dude different I want to do that, you know, yeah. but that paper. Exactly. So that's what it's about, man. It's just leveling up so I can teach my daughter, I can teach the next generation. It's like you say, I got a foundation, but I think it's important that we learn all that stuff so we can stay on top, not just get there. That's real. You know what I'm saying? We we gotta stay on top. That's all. Yeah, because like like you said, the way that they break down companies, you be like, damn, they just shit on a two hundred million dollar company. Dog, I'd be happy if I had a ten million dollar company. And then <laughs> you real. see that difference and you like, oh, okay, you gotta play this game. Mm-hmm. That shit crazy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And we got it in us because it's with everything. The same thing with the shoe game. Everything that mm-hmm. we do, it's ways to, whatever you're interested in, it's ways to build that out to be a master at that and to make a successful business. Hell yeah. That. You know what I'm That's saying? Mm-hmm. Especially with marketing because we make everything dope. Mm-hmm. Like we be, we be championing the craziest shit and we be the reason when it dies. <laughs> yeah. Like we really be having all the control shit. Mm-hmm. If niggas got on TV and we say, hey, we ain't fuck with Jordans no more. And really stuck to it, it's gonna be a difference. Gonna they they gonna sit on the store. <laughs> yeah, you you ain't gotta wait for your Jordans in, um, in the mail. You can go to River Oaks and pick them shits up. When you stopped hooping, did you go straight to school or you took a little break? Yeah, nah. I, um, so I was with the Kings, mm-hmm. and um, <clears throat> I think it was February or March when I got released. And um, <clears throat> a lot of people don't know I had hyper extended my knee twice. Mm. So I'm on the court. I think I was closing out on uh, Jimmy Butler with the Heat, and uh, I'm closing out. And it just my knee just locked and just gave out, and that's yeah. a scary feeling when you just running and your shit just give out. So yeah. that ended up yeah, happening yeah. twice. Right before the King situation, I ended up um, leaving the team and then just got my got my stuff right here in Indianapolis. It's home for me. Make sure my knee was right. Got all the therapy. Um, Shellborn. Yeah, and then yep, mm. and then just yeah. made sure I made sure I just handled what I wanted to handle and what I wanted to do with my time. And now I got everything that I need to get out the way. And now I'm focused on getting back to the league. And like I say, starting my business. Um, I ain't announced it yet, but it's something to do with involving with Duncan and Hooping for the for the next generation. Yeah. It's introducing that to them. So okay. that, you know, I got the sauce, the secrets to that, <clears throat> to that skill. And we could talk about that too. Uh, I remember yeah. when you was doing the dunk contest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That nigga's like, it's a way to jump. Yeah. I'm like, nigga, what? You just gonna go up there and jump? He's like, nah, it's a secret to everything. Oh man, this nigga G got some space jam yeah, shit. Hey. <laughs> hey. G I about like, to bring back the uh, the strip shoes. Remember the East Bay? Yeah, yeah. See, I, I bought all of them and everything. So that's the reason why I'm doing this, is because I, I bought the shoes where it gave you the the, the heel or whatever. Yeah. You couldn't touch the ground. And you know, yeah. I bought the DVDs to get my vertical up. And I put salt in my shoes, like Jordan, everything, and um, I figured out the, the secrets to jumping, the sauce to jumping. So that's hard. I want to give back and do that, but scale it out and make it a business. That's you know dope. What I'm As you should, yeah. Don't do nothing for free. We can't now. <laughs> Don't know? do nothing for free. Can't now. Hey, that's hard. Like you said, you know, you stuck that in there. You know what I'm saying? You working back. You know what I'm saying? To get back active in these streets. You know what I'm saying? You yep. see they handing out the yep. bags. Go get it's you coming. another one. I got a couple questions for you. Know what I'm saying? As far as your pro career, what was the, the favorite team you played on so far? The Warriors, without a doubt. I can without fucking a imagine. A lot of people, that's a crazy topic because a lot of people, you know, they shit on us that year with the Warriors. They like, oh, y'all, y'all was y'all was trash. And you know, we we was like we didn't win a lot of games, <laughs> but I'm looking at it like I'm here guarding Brian every night. I'm guarding Brian, Kawhi, PG, you know, every night yeah. I'm the, at that three spot. I'm starting. I'm doing what I gotta do on both ends of the court, having the career numbers. Um, but besides all of that, um, Playing with Dre, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, getting to see them, like what they really like, it was crazy. Like Steve Kerr, I remember during practice one time, he like, all right, we're gonna call the play reverse. He's like, nah, scratch that. I, I gotta I drive a Tesla. I'm gonna click it like this. <laughs> we gonna, <let's> call reverse. <laughs> I'm like, yo, but it's just stuff like that throughout yeah. the practice where it keep us locked in. We laughing and shit, but he yeah. like, he think it's a funny joke, but we we really like locked in. Now nah, we like, all right, reverse. Everybody run reverse, you know? Yeah. Um, but coach like that, man. He sometimes you walk in the gym, he like 75 and sunny, just go enjoy some sun. Get y'all shots up, go enjoy some sun, no practice. Damn. You know what I'm saying? I ain't so. had too many of them kind of coaches. <laughs> <laughs> Woody well, wasn't going for that all, shit. That's all you needed. <laughs> well, no, Woody wasn't doing that. Bub was kind of like Bub would do that. Yeah, Bub was like that. What was their work ethic like? Seeing Draymond uh, and all them or theirs. Theirs. I mean, I know you 
Clearly, yeah, nigga, you yeah. the a thousand ice ice spice <laughs> on your oar, nigga. I know you're dedicated. See the first ice spice. <laughs> ice spice. You said ice spice. <laughs> nigga stole the act. Look, though. nigga, you've been dedicated since that motherfucking incubator. So she was in that little uh, my size oven, nigga. Yeah. I already know your work ethic. <laughs> that wake and bake. Uh, but now, how was they shit though? Like watching them, yeah. like man. Clay, Steph. Steph Curry is is an animal, like a God. different beast, man. Yeah. And anything hand eye coordination. I think I seen an interview with Andre uh, Iguodala saying that. But anything hand eye coordination, where if Steph was shoot like shooting from a mile away, he gonna hit the target. If he's die uh, darts, he gonna hit the target. Pool table, he gonna he gonna knock that down. Anything hand eye coordination, Steph on it, and that, he really liked that. But oh, as cool. far as like his practice time, it's crazy, man. Dude, don't stop running. You see why he in shape. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You see why he is successful. He gets to the gym early every day and he put in his work. You know what I'm saying? So I respect all of them because too, Dre will pull up to he'll pull up here to the park. He'll put, you know, you know how Dre yeah. is. Dre cool as hell. So same thing with Clay. They all just they don't operate like the superstar mentality where they can't right. do nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They operate off off love for the teammates. You can't do nothing but respect that. For sure. Yeah, I'm on the I fuck with Clay Thompson tough. That's always been one of my favorite players. But you can tell, like, the culture, like you said, I hate when people say that word, but you can tell, like, the culture, like, the relationships they got there, like, that shit genuine. But especially, like, y'all who play on multiple teams, you go from places that's really lit like that, and then you go to another organization that's like, nah, these niggas ain't on this at all. <laughs> it's hard to dial in after that shit. Like, you got to really differentiate your. Like, <laughs> Well, shit, let's talk about that first or Squiddy. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. I mean, I went from Atlanta to the Pacers. <laughs> I love the people with the Pacers. The people with the Pacers are good people. Yeah. Like the people around people. the organization are good yeah. people. But yeah. that team was just not. Boy, dysfunctional. It was dysfunctional. I See, love the thing, some of the people the thing, on that team. I think though. with the Pacers that make them, you know, like a decent organization is they do the small things. Like when I came here, I was in Minnesota. There wasn't nobody to help me find a crib, nah, a car. My mama worst. out there with me. We trying to go get my furniture, you know, in between yeah. practices and shit. And Ooh. I get to Indiana, they got everything set up. You know, Karen, mm-hmm. Karen called like, hey, we got the houses set up. You want to go check out the cribs? We got the Ford dealership, you know, everything lined up with the Pacers. That's yeah. hard. Yeah. Pacers as far as, you know, everything else that was going on during that time. <laughs> that locker room. It was a crazy time for the Pacers and <laughs> Indiana fans. <laughs> that Pacer team, the organization is great, though. They was really good people. What's your funnest Pacer moment, though, off the court with the squad? Did y'all ever go out somewhere? At least, I know it was yeah. hectic, but... <laughs> Can you remember time um, when y'all stepped out somewhere and y'all just enjoyed each other's paws? But yeah. you know what I mean? Just kick it. <laughs> we ain't, I, I, mean, I don't remember really doing much with that team. Really? 82 games, y'all niggas didn't go to one little spot that was lit. I mean, we went places, but like as yeah. a group, we wouldn't like. Okay. That's a different ass team, though. If you look at the, the different individuals on that team, I yeah. couldn't see them niggas clicking up. I remember, was it your year? I think I, I got hurt and it was my ankle. I got hurt my <clears> ankle. And I got back from my surgery, and the whole team was at my crib. We was doing some type of like team bonding. It was supposed to, it was a mandatory team bonding thing. Oh, I wasn't there and I was yet. like, yeah, we're gonna have it at my crib. And I ended up getting hurt. So uh, I come back from surgery, you know, I'm high off the stuff that they give you from the surgery. Perk and 30. I, I just in. popped the perk 30. I get back to the crib. I don't know anybody that's there. You know, I'm I'm feeling wavy. Like the whole the whole the whole Pacer squad is in there, you know. So that was funny. You said I never forget that day. Damn. I thought you was on that team. Nah, I wasn't on that team. The year I the year I was there, that's when you was like coming into your own. And I'm like, why y'all don't start this for? <laughs> I was yeah. throwing him live. We had a little backdoor play. I'm like, every time. Every I'm time. That's he used a, to say that. He was I'm like, a, every time. I'm going to throw it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to throw it every time. It did. But <laughs> they weren't feeling that. They weren't feeling that. But I remember when he was starting, we were on a win streak. Because we was winning all our games at home. And then, you know. Yeah. yeah. Shit go how it go. <laughs> yeah, I be so sad talking about it. You know I love it. But <laughs> yeah, he, I be so he, sad. He, the he, energy he, just drained. Because it, 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 right. it, wasn't, it wasn't like that. It was like, that team could have been good. We were supposed to be in. It was supposed to be nice. Man, man, if you go down that line, man. Yeah, that was cool, bro. We, were supposed like, to we be started it. the year off with Stucky. We had so many people on that team, bro. <laughs> it was so many I forgot. Yeah, under Stucky six foot guards on that team. Man, we had so Stucky, many people. Tay, you. Shout out to Monte Ellis. CJ uh, Miles, yeah. Did we have CJ Watson at some point too? I right, wasn't on that. Fuck it, we had all the CJs. I'm just yep. Yep. See, fuck. Yeah. 
I remember I texted this nigga after the first game. I said, you know what? That motherfucker Miles, he might be worth a damn. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that. I said, I'm not fucking with Jeff. I'm watching these niggas. I'll never forget. <laughs> Jeff hit that that fake pass and then threw that bitch off. And I was like, Oh, we lit this year. He came and pushed that bitch. And then we just looked and everybody was like, Fuck. Man, we, was at, we just couldn't win on the road, bro. We won all our games at home. I think we won <laughs> like. 30 games at home. We Damn. was losing to the Nets that time. That's when the Nets went. <laughs> Shit, yeah, that bro. That time. <laughs> we was losing to we the Nets. We was losing to everybody on the road, bro. I think we won like seven games on the road. What y'all think it was, though? <laughs> I think it was just. Well, we, you had a pick, well obviously, son, we had man. the talent. It wasn't that full, the chemistry where I'm yeah. from. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It was all bad as soon as I got there. <laughs> as soon as I walked through the door, it was over. So, can we blame it Jeff? Went all, it wasn't all you, though. We had a lot of, it, was, it was a lot. It was a lot of shit going on. I was the team, like the team mentor. Yeah. And Wait, I, was, you, I, was a, I was a young You're young. But, Everybody I was a young in, but you know, mama was coming to me, you know, and I'm like, yo, I'm just trying to keep up with the way, keep up with everything that's going on. You know? Bro, this shit was so crazy. I'm young, so I'm, my eyes is bright. I'm trying to look around, see what's going on. Every day it was something. I'm like, man, this is crazy. I just put my head down. I'm like, man, I'm about to get some money, man. He <laughs> <laughs> turned a youngster into the therapist. Oh, no, God. Man. But I used to tell him, like, bro, you're going to be good. You just got to play. They got to let you play. Yeah. They were not playing like they yeah. should have. That's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. So we can blame Jeff for that Pacers team, is what you're saying? Nah. You blame yourself? Let's run with that narrative. It wasn't, it, we, we it, 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 I played a big part. I probably was like 60%. <laughs> oh. I, I take that. That's a nice shot. Because <laughs> I, I just went open to being like. Yeah, well, I mean, we talked about it. Yeah, we I just went open to the idea of being like that guy. I was like, fuck that. They're going to have to be cool with me. Yeah. Anybody go, I'm about to be all around you. Nigga, I ain't riding nobody. Me, pause. Like, shit. Go say hi to, to me, motherfucker. You were supposed to jump on PG back, bro. Yeah, fuck out of here. <laughs> See what I'm saying, man? He, he, he messy, man. <laughs> it was Jeff just trying to ruin it to bring Gordon Harold to Indianapolis. <laughs> I was, See what I'm saying, bro? It wasn't me, bro. <laughs> They love Gore here. <laughs> they they still do. I wasn't mad. I was like, no, they we played the Hornets last week and I heard the Broncos. They was like, Gordon Hay would be a great addition. I swear to God. No. No. <laughs> Y'all could use him. They, they no. Stop until that happen. That's gonna happen. Though. It's gonna happen. It's Dog. To the Pacers. We're gonna retire a Pacer. Dog, look what they did to Ricky Rubio. They wished him to be a Pacer forever. He didn't even play. They was like, at some point, we gonna get this nigga on the roster. They didn't know they wanted Ricky. They, they tried to get Ricky for like three straight years. He was there last year, but remember he was hurt. Yeah. He didn't ever oh, play for the okay. Pacers, but they were determined to get that motherfucker 317 and got them. That's, that's what they're going to do. So, what year did you uh, enter the dunk contest? 2017. 17 okay. was when I won. So that was that next year. Yeah. That was it. That was that year. Yeah. Yeah. And then they tried to play together. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cause that's when I came up to you. And yeah. I told you, like, you yeah, was I'm, like, I'm about to win this motherfucker. <clears throat> and you was in there practicing. Yeah. And I'm watching a nigga through the door. Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. I see what he doing. Like, I, I ain't gonna say that, but yeah, I say this <laughs> shit. I'm like, okay. Yeah. How, nah, how quick did you sign that shoe deal with that con with that um that championship? Man, well, I, it was crazy. I was signing D Wade shoes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, coming out, we could talk about that. It was they give you the options, you know, Nike gonna give you like 25 bit. bands and give you like the rest in gear, you know, 25 yeah. bands, 25 bands in gear. Adidas gonna give you like whatever. Lee Ning was like, all right, we'll throw you a bag. So I'm like, all right, I'm going with Lee Ning. Out the gate. And out the gate. And uh, I was one of the first ones, you know, that take that type of deal. It was in my rookie year. D-Way ended up seeing me um, with the summer league. And then I, I did a 360. D-Way seen me and was like, nah, you coming over way away. So um, ever since then, me and D-Way, we got cool. He let me make my own shoes. I put the logo on my shoes and everything. Mm -hmm. But um, so we was like, yo, we want to do a crazy shoe for the dunk contest. When you take pictures um, and the flash go, the whole shoe gonna be reflective and it's gonna, gonna change colors. So they did that on the shoe for me. And I ended up, I had like two or three different shoes that I wore, um, but the eyes were stacked against me crazy. <laughs> I remember it was me, Aaron Gordon, um, DeAndre Jordan, mm -hmm. and um, Derek Jones Jr. Oh, and uh, <laughs> my agent had called me because at first I'm like, nah, I don't think, you know, I can dunk, but I don't think I'm gonna do the dunk contest. I don't know if this for me, I don't do that type of style dunking. And uh, he called me back and was like, I got somebody for you. And I was like, okay, let me talk to dude. He texts me, you gonna do a 360 between the legs. He was like, throw it out the backboard, double tap, tap. Damn. Between. He texted me a list of 10 dunks I had never heard before. I was like, 
He out his mind. <laughs> thought you was Ain't a motherfucking no NBA jam player. Ain't no way. I met up with dude. He came to the Pacers facility one time after practice. Mm-hmm. We walked through the dunks that he had on the list. And I started making them shit. And then he started stacking my cousin on top of boxes. So at this point, my cousin, like 7'1", 7'2", I'm clearing him. I'm jumping over him. This is the first time I ever tried to jump over somebody. In 40 minutes, I'm starting clearing, dude. I'm like, yeah, we're going to win the dunk contest. Yeah, I, I remember. <laughs> Damn. Damn. That's shit. the practice you was talking about. Yeah, like, after like, I'm going to win this shit. I'm going to win like, this. You was in the Pacer side gym? I was in the Pacer mm-hmm. side gym with all yeah. the brick in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's still there. It's just the fevers there. now. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, man. And then we, we got to New Orleans and, you know, I didn't go out. I didn't do nothing. I'm like, nah, I ain't going out. I ain't partying. Oh, damn. Out of the weekend, I'm here to win a dunk contest. Because ever since a kid, that's what I wanted to do. You yeah. know, I seen Pops win a ring and all that, but ain't nobody won a dunk contest. I'm like, nah, I need to that's do this. Hard. As a kid, I broke my glass, the backboard in my, you know, in my mom's crib outside. I broke the whole, shattered the whole backboard and everything, trying to lower the rim and dunk as a kid. <laughs> yeah. So I'm replaying this in my mind yeah. as we pull up. Aaron, Aaron Gordon in the locker room, uh, DeAndre Jordan in the locker room, nobody stretched. We get out there, and uh, I'm the only one that's stretching. You know, I do some practice dunks. Nobody stretched. Nobody did nothing. I still got that same mentality. Mm-hmm. I go out there. My first dunk was my best dunk. I stacked my cousin on top of somebody's shoulders, mm-hmm. cleared him. And uh, I scared, I feel like I scared the competition. And Gordon messed up his dunks. DeAndre Jordan messed up their dunks. And I ended up winning. And I remember grabbing the trophy. It felt like I blacked out. As soon as I grabbed the everything I wanted in my life, my life as a kid. Yeah, I that's remember, hard. I blacked out as I grabbed. I don't remember nothing else that happened as I raised yeah. it above my head. That's hard. And uh, I grabbed the trophy, walked off. And Meek Mill was on the left. And I was blacked out. I just walked straight past him. And uh, I think it was my mom and one of my homies was like, Hey, hey, gee, that's Meek right there. And as a kid, you know, high school growing yeah. up, Meek was that guy. Like, I was listening to all Meek. That was one of my, my guys. You know. That was probably my favorite rapper. <laughs> you a dream chaser. Man, dream chaser. <laughs> What's crazy, I'm about to write this story. I ran back to him, shook his head. I'm like, I couldn't think of nothing. I'm still blacked out at this point. I'm like, dream chaser. That's all I said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's all I yeah. yeah was dream chaser. I see it in you. I see it in you. I see it in you. Yo, man. <laughs> Gio Melly. Yeah. <laughs> well, yo, man. Okay. After that, though, it was crazy. I started meeting a, a bunch of different people. I started to come into my own. Like Ice Cube said, what's up at the garden? You know, Damn. all type of stuff when we started playing. So it was love after that. Damn, that's hard. Because like you said, I, I don't know what they're going to do with the dunk contest. Um, hopefully they get this shit back because... Last year definitely wasn't it. Um, it was good this year though. Yeah, yeah Mac McClellan. Mac, Mac did his thing. Mac, yeah, but the other shit was DJ, like, all right, DJ. DJ. It, it was see, good. It was good, bro. I, I, I'm, I'm hating. <laughs> yeah, you're hating, bro. That's fine. I'll see, be a hater. Them dunks that, that Mac was on, that's what I was talking about a little bit about my course. Them all, them all secrets. Them all uh, like I, little, you, you know I what I'm saying? You seen it in that back yeah. gym, you know? Mm. So so I, I want to teach the youth, like give away some of them tips. Like if I told you like, hey, this is the one thing I'm going to give away, free game. The dunk coach, when he came up to me, he was like, hey, G, go between the legs. And I tried to do a between the legs dunk. I missed it. He was like, yo, go up under the knee. It's the same thing. It's just an illusion. I went up under my knee. I started you know, cocking that bitch back when I did it. I'm like, whoa, yeah, this secret's to all yeah. of this. So that's just a Damn, little free that game that I'm going to give to the youngest out there. Hold on, go up hold under on, your hold knee. on, G. Use your knees. Pause. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's wild. Uh, <laughs> but that makes sense, though. So dunking under is the exact same. I mean, it's gonna look whatever. the same. It's, it's gonna reverse. look the same. Really? Damn. It's if you're like, doing a between the legs dunk, yeah. Like, Cause most people between the legs, you're gonna try to go between your legs yeah. and do all of this. It's like, nah, just go up under your knee. Do a skip with the <laughs> with the dunk. <laughs> go up under your knee and you'll get it. That makes weight. That makes a lot of sense when you just made it that simple. Mm-hmm. So it's a bunch of stuff that's really that simple. Damn. And y'all know how 2K got the whole layout where it's like, all right, you can do Jordan's dunk, Blake Griffin's dunk, all mm-hmm. that. I could teach you Jordan's dunk, Blake Griffin's dunk, anybody's dunk. It's all a it's all just a simulation, you know, it's it's easy. So Right, I'm excited to teach yeah, that. That's what I've been be building nice, now man. through Harvard. Uh, you know, through thought Harvard. You heard that last part. Make sure through Harvard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I we thought ain't going you to school for some, nothing, uh, nigga. You got tips and shit. I thought you had some drugs for sale. <laughs> 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 he thought he was selling. My young, my young boy, the eighth grade, G. Tell me how much <laughs> prescription, what we gotta do. We the pills. Get him a check. <laughs> he thought he had. Because I'm out in my head, shit. G went to Harvard. G got a pill plug. He tapped in. 
God damn it. I'm about I can't to get that bra. I can't know what the formula is. I'm about to get that bra. What? <laughs> nigga, that Miami bra. That little Bobby up, nigga. <laughs> that Jeremy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he this close. <laughs> GPL gonna take him up through there. Oh, nigga, I'm about to take that pill. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back hooping. You think you got a new invention I'm about to work on? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. No worry. For sure. We're going to put the podcast on hold. I'm about to go back and hoop for two more years. God, bro. <laughs> Give me my knees back. Hey, yo, that nigga knees got cabbage in them, man. It's over. <laughs> It's <laughs> over for my nigga days. You are stupid, man. <laughs> how is it? Uh, how has it been? You know what I'm saying? Trying to get back to get to um to game speed. Like, how's that been? So you know I'm saying, tapping back in heavy into it. Like you said, you was in school, and that was your your undivided focus, especially with you having the baby, taking care of that situation. How's it back now? Are you feeling the love back into the game, or did it ever leave, or do you feel rejuvenated with it again? Yeah, it's 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 funny because mm-hmm. I got a love hate relationship for the game. I always have since I grown up. You know. It's, it's what I do, but I got a passion for a lot of other things, mm-hmm. but I can only get to the other things through Doing hooping. this. And that's what I do, and it's part of what I do. And I love hooping, you know, but um, it's at times where, and I did, I took a step away. I handled what I had to handle. Uh, when stuff was crazy, it was all over the place, you know. I got traded from, on the plane. I got traded on the plane from the <laughs> Warriors to Philly. Damn. Y'all know how it go. Mm-hmm. Um, and after so long, seven, eight years, I'm like, whoa, this is this is a lot. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm enjoying getting back to it and getting into that routine because I think that's one thing about Hoopers is we got a routine where you know mm-hmm. how it is. We wake up on the daily and it's like, all right, we get to it, get our work in throughout the day, and then you handle your business after 2, 3 p.m. if you ain't got a game. Mm-hmm. So that's it's been, it's been uh, I moved to Cali recently. Okay. So, <clears throat> so I got a gym right off the water, you know, right off the coast that I can go work out and I love the water, so I get to see the water every day and stuff. So it's it's been a vibe, man. Oh yeah, you got a good ass training facility. You are here in vacation mode, you know what I'm saying? Open the gym doors. And that's what people don't understand a lot. And you can attest to this. It's not that people don't like doing their profession in sports, whatever it is, but the business of sports is totally different than the outside person would ever understand. Like you said, you got traded on a team flight. That's just like me driving to work and motherfucker telling me, yeah, before you pull up, don't. Like, <laughs> that'll fuck your whole day up. Like, and, and you got to go 48, which I got 48 hours to report, mm-hmm. and you might fuck around and have to play. Yeah. yeah, That shit crazy to adjust to, and people don't understand how much that account. They just think, oh, you get paid a lot of money. No, my whole life just changed. I got to move my daughter across the fucking nation. I got to find somewhere to live between practice, like you said. Yeah. Oh, let me come out here my first game. They done threw me in. I ain't yeah. doing shit. And I ain't in a rotation for yeah. two weeks. For like that shit, I yeah, can understand. Yeah. Like that way on people. People don't understand. Like that performance shit is real. Like you yeah. gotta perform. Yeah, yeah. No, it is what it is, you know. And I think it's I understand the fan side of it. I think it's just a lot of people gotta realize we real people at the end yeah. of the mm-hmm. day. So, you know, I'm not with the whole like, you know, everybody wanna wanna have they they time to shine on the mic and talk crazy. We was talking <laughs> about Stephen A. Smith, we don't get to him. But <laughs> You know, everybody want to put the mic in front of their face and say crazy. I'm not that type of type of person. You know, it mm-hmm. is what it is. But I think fans should realize that we we human beings at the same time. So anything regard, don't be tweeting crazy stuff. The DMs is, you know what I'm saying. I really didn't understand how crazy fans was till we got to the league. And you know, after the game, they send you some crazy shit. Yeah, they say anything, <laughs> anything. <laughs> so then, fan duels, all this stuff come around. They started betting, and now it's really popular. Yeah. But you know, six, seven years ago, when I first came to the league. They was on that, yeah. and I'm like, man, now it's crazy with the whole betting. I can only imagine what they, bro, they <laughs> sending some people. I was on in there. Milwaukee, nigga. I stole one of Bobby Porter's rebounds, <laughs> bro. I got the most hate mail I ever got in my life. It was like a parlay. I don't even know how it go, but Bobby needed ten rebounds for everybody to win. So you know how Bobby got the little chant. Everybody, like, Bobby, yeah. Bobby. That shit came from that. Cause nigga, he was about to win a parlay, so like he needed one more rebound, and Bud was like, took him out. They like, Bob, put Bobby in, Bobby. Everybody in the arena yelling, <laughs> Bobby. So Bobby standing up, like they fuck with me. I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, damn, they really love this nigga. And then one of the fans was like, he needs one more rebound, Tig. You fucked it up. <laughs> And I'm like, damn. Like, what? Did you sub in for him? Nah, he took nah. his rebound. He, he had it. nine. But like, it was way earlier in the game, and the uh, rebound came to me. Like, Bobby was right there, and I just grabbed it and like pushed the ball up the court. And they was just like, that could have been his fucking rebound. I lost, a, I could have won a thousand dollars. I'm like, y'all for real? Yeah, I'm bro. like, put that nigga back in. <laughs> so I just got That's here. crazy. Yeah, they be going crazy now, so. 
Yeah. Hey, listen, I got beef with niggas to this day. I've never met because they fucked up a parlay. parlay. See, you know what I'm <laughs> but I ain't sending nobody no. That's out of pocket. Bro, they didn't say anything. When I was in Minnesota, bro, they was out of pocket. Bro. Yeah, that's the only time you got like unmitigated. Yeah, hate. I don't got no love for Minnesota <laughs> at all, bro. You almost got some hate mail from me for that Cleveland State game. I, ain't gonna I would, I would have gave a. Oh flashback. yeah, yeah. I would have cared. I would have cared. We ain't gotta have no flashback, but yeah, yeah, that is the no. Nah, but Minnesota, <laughs> nah, bro. Fuck. I got what ounce of love. <laughs> Minnesota. I just got to type in Jeff Teague on Twitter. Just hashtag. Bro, I told y'all. That shit is so funny, bro. <laughs> the Pacers picture of you oh, holding your is. face on a bench is tweeted every day by some Pacers person. And I was like, this nigga don't even be on Twitter and don't know how funny this I, is. I don't be on there at all. But it's crazy. Like, I literally, Minnesota was like the worst experience ever. <laughs> I swear to God, it was already ice cold. I yeah. couldn't even walk outside. Make a fucking shot. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I don't get to shoot. <laughs> he don't get to shoot. I don't get to shoot. Look, call the bitch in there. Yeah, like, I had to. Like, I don't get to shoot. Yeah, I got cat wings. walking wig. outside the warmest car up. Fuck on his ass. I'll be mad as hell. Like, it's cold as fuck. Y'all niggas are crazy. <laughs> cold as hell. I'm getting gas and shit. Shoot. Oh, tired of watching you dribble. Oh, shit. <laughs> I used to be like, get cat the ball. I'm like, get the ball. I'm fucking dead. <laughs> that was crazy, man. Hey, yeah. fans are fucking stupid. Oh, I couldn't wait to leave that motherfucker, bro. I was like, they got to get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm nothing to you getting 20 on pump three and hey, get cat the ball. Fuck you. <laughs> Swear to God, Who are you bro. talking to? And I live downtown, so it was worse. Like, hey, damn. Like, I'm like, y'all niggas always come to the right. gang. Game be empty. What are you talking about? What was the best city or the worst city you lived in? I mean, G. I'm gonna keep saying San Fran was man. I had the time of my life in San Fran. No, the worst. I know the worst city. The worst city. Detroit. You know me being from Michigan though, so it's ah, a little bit better. But probably probably Sacramento, the Kings, Kings yeah. or, yeah. or Philly. Even my pops was a little iffy on Philly. Both times <laughs> I went to Philly, he like, oh shit. <laughs> Damn, here we go again. That's yeah. how we felt. You know? They don't like shit in Philly. They Philly, don't like Philly, Santa Claus. Man. They boo you in the first quarter. They don't play it. <laughs> hey, but when they love you, they love you. They, when they love you, they love you. When, yeah, man. We Who were, they love besides Al Nerverson? When Brett Brown was there, mm, like, y'all was bad. Man, they oh, loved yeah. Iggy, bro, in uh, Philly for sure. They wanted him out and Lou Will. Well, everybody loves Lou Will. Yeah, Lou love. They tough. They's tough love in Philly. It's mm-hmm. all love there. It's tough love. It's just a. It's just a hard city to play in. Like something about the organization. Some some teams got that organization to where it's just some rocky about them. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Damn. That's crazy. Minnesota. Y'all see it. <laughs> Y'all see it. Well, I, you Y'all know, I'm a Pacers it. fan. I know. <laughs> That's Minnesota. It's just That's rocky. It. Like it. it's it's probably cooler. I don't know because Alex Rodriguez and them there now. But before that, it was a little spooky. Man. Yeah, he was there. He know it's <laughs> like they it actually. Was, it's real cool people there, yeah. but it's just like some. We probably the target center wasn't built yeah. up how it was yeah. in my rookie year. So at least you had a little bit of that barely, cause. and I only got that because Jimmy started complaining. <laughs> Jimmy was like, take that down, take that down, <laughs> take that down. I was like, this dude crazy. Damn. I that's swear he came in there. Oh, that's ugly. Take that down. Do y'all care about the players? Take this down. I'm like, damn. Did you ha- oh you had the sleeve jerseys when you was in uh Minnesota? Yeah, oh, the NBA sleeves. is nasty for that. Yeah, for I making niggas who've been short sleeve jerseys. I wanted one of them. Bro, I thought right? those was tight, bro. I did too. Y'all fucked with them? I, yeah, I mean, you ain't wear with no fit, but it shit. was only certain teams that, that had them. Yeah, we ain't had them with the Hawks. Our Hawks had them. Brian was ripping his. Hey, Brian, different. And you got, but you got on the jersey now. If that motherfucker had the sleeves on it. That nasty. motherfucker, <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> this would have been disgusting. Over the shoulder, because yeah. Adidas wild out. Because I remember the Louisville ones when they play. I said, "Oh, these are nasty. These are these are softball uniforms." Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah that's nasty. when they started them. Yeah, yeah they had yeah, niggas hooping the V necks. They was out of pocket. That was the yeah. league was Adidas then too. Yeah. Ooh, that's nasty. So we got to get into it, man. Obviously, you know your pops is a legend. You know what I'm saying? He had a, a particular Philly quote unquote legend a little bit shook, speaking about how people get on microphones and talk crazy. I think that even though it is hilarious, <clears throat> some of these niggas who have podcasts while they playing have to chill out for a second. The live updates after games be crazy because they be talking insane about games that we know really don't be mattering. Mm-hmm. I, I fuck with it. I fuck with it to an extent, but I'd be like, some of that shit be like, all right, y'all, like, we got to chill out. Draymond should be funny because Draymond know how to do that shit. Pat Bev be hit or miss with me, even though I fuck with Pat Bev. Hey, I think it all funny because I wish I would have did it because I would have been talking crazy. <laughs> oh, in Minnesota? I'm like, 
<laughs> what? I'm always gonna say for the song. This shit was awful. I would have been on there like you would have yeah, been wild. <laughs> this shit's awful over here. They all passed a fucking ball. <laughs> they <would've killed> <laughs> You don't even do it respectfully. Yeah, you would have yeah. been lit, though. You would have been lit, but they would have got you the fuck up out of there. Yeah, you, I would, that would have been my plan. You would have got traded like you. Yeah, I would have been. <laughs> I did get traded like that. <laughs> For real? Wait, where'd you I find it on the plane? The guy was complaining. I was coming to the coach to complain. Like, why the fuck you take me out last night? He was like, perfect. I need to talk to you. <laughs> We've I'm been like, waiting. Bro, I'm, like, Ryan, I'm like, Ryan, I'm like, what up, man? Why you took me out last night, man? Well, good to see you, Teague. I just scored, I, I scored eight and a quarter. Why you take me out? He you like, scored your last eight here. Um, then GM walk in. He ain't like me from the beginning. He like, yeah, Teague, you just got traded. I was like, fuck out of <laughs> He like, yeah, I did you a favor. I'm like, oh, shit. I probably got to the Mavs. I'm about to go to the playoffs. He's like, I'll send you back to Atlanta. I go, what? <laughs> they worse than us. I was like, why you trade me there? He was like. You got a house there, don't you? Oh, <laughs> I was like, it's motherfucker. Damn. Like, that's crazy. I was like, cool. That's but that's crazy. crazy. Was this the same GM that got you there? Mm-mm. I was going to say, I, there's no way that could have happened in that year of time Tibbs. span. Tibbs was there. When I got ah, there. there we go. Fire Tibbs. <laughs> Shout out to Tibbs. My Minnesota, when they, Minnesota cut me, I told y'all about that. And mm-hmm. I was a rookie. And it was the one time I was sick. And I'm sick. I'm like, I ain't going to practice that. You know, you got to go get a doctor. Yeah. So I'm on my way to the doctor because you got to get a real excuse. Like, yeah. he really sick. I'm on my way to the doctor. Agent called me like, I think you're going to get traded today. Don't go in. <laughs> Might not want to go in. <laughs> That's tough. So I'm at the crib. I wasn't going in anyways. I'm sick. I started calling everybody like, yo, this is the one time I've been sick. The only time I'm a rookie. Nah, y'all can't do me like this. <laughs> they ended up dropping my bags off at the front, at the front in garbage bags, in front of my condo building. Just dropped it off in garbage bags. Yeah. They the NBA way. different, bro. Different. It's a brutal business, and people don't understand. That's why you gotta get as much money as you can and get on. And like you said, them relationships. You know what I'm saying? Like, look what happened when you were in Michigan. You build a relationships everywhere you go. You build a relationships with people. Mm-hmm. To, like you said, once you get in the NBA, you gotta stay in because you get out. It's a strategy behind it too. Like we talked about, if you can go higher, you know what I'm saying, or mm-hmm. trying to scale out to get you top ten or top fifteen to team, because it really matter if you lottery pick that difference of between if you're gonna that first four years or not. Mm-hmm. And you could be weak, but a GM would much rather risk three years of almost being right than wasting it after one year of being wrong, because then his ass is getting axed. Exactly. Man, so many wonderful stories. Before we get out of here, we got I, we got to hear, man, the iconic, the iconic story, <laughs> man, the two one nine legend on Stephen A's ass, yeah. man. Where, where did where the fuck did this happen from? Yeah. Man, it's it's a crazy story. I think it started from it's a coach with the Bucks. <clears throat> I forget who was the coach. The black, black they had a black coach back then, and you know my pops. I guess they got into it. My pops like I don't care if you black, white, whatever. We don't agree. We don't agree. Stephen A. Smith found it different. And, and thought that Pops, you know, was going at him because he black. And uh, we can do the research and see who the coach was, but that's it ain't none of my business. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It got nothing to do with me. But as we get to the story, um, Stephen A., whatever happened between them happened. My Pops called me one day like, hey, son, you got a number to TMZ? I'm like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, he <laughs> I, you know, I, something happened. The article came out. Stephen had just said, Stephen A had just said something in the media. I'm like, Pot, I could find it for you. I made a couple calls, you know, got on the number. I turn on the news, TMZ Sports. It's like Big Dog asked to take Stephen A. Smith to the cage, to the UFC cage. <laughs> Say he what? wanted to see him in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell no. So, Pot, hey, Pot. <laughs> Hey, Pasta got on T, uh, TMZ and he said, said he wanted, had you on some secretary shit. Face time <laughs> with it though. Oh wait, well, he was he on the phone. Fa- he Facetime TMZ, <laughs> called in like, oh, hey, man. I don't care what he say. Tell him meet me in the cage. Meet me in the cage. <laughs> yes. So Pasta is real about it. So next thing I know, we have a game in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> we play in Houston. I'm, you know, I guard James Hart. I had a pretty good game. Yeah. And uh, it was, you know, Stephen A had noticed me afterwards, you know, and he didn't really know Glenn Rouse in the third. I don't know if it clicked with him throughout my whole five years in the league yeah. before that. <laughs> so then he come up to me in the back after the game and he was like, he's like, hey, Glenn, you know, whatever happened between me and your pops, you know, when I see him, I'm going to tell him that I didn't mean it. What's old is old. We getting older. He got a son that's trying to make it in the league. And I respect that you on your grind and trying to do that. And I'm looking at him like, hold on, this the same Stephen A that's been talking all this crazy the whole time? 
Steven. And, um, I couldn't wait to call my pops after that. Like, yeah, he just showed his card right here. That's exactly who he is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't like the beat that that personally he try to start with yeah. players and how it's how it's brought about. And then whatever said is said is done and need to be done. But for some reason. He just dragged the thing along with my pops. And it's like, man, even my pops say, it was 30 years ago. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. man, that was forever ago. And he still wanted to put my name in his mouth. But pop shut it down then when he said the UFC, he came and apologized quick. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with it? The fact that he had you call TMZ. That's hilarious. That's bro. top tier. The right fact there, that he bro. FaceTime TMZ is <laughs> I have never heard of and a Pops, nigga FaceTime and TMZ. Don't do no interviews. He don't at all. do no nothing. Nah, like, ain't nobody heard from my day. He stayed to himself. You know what I'm saying? And he called me like. You got the number to uh, TMZ <laughs> out of all places, T. Out of all, out of all. Yeah, that's what, bro. That's what had me weak. Yeah. I was stuck like, <laughs> oh, TMZ. He had yeah, Mark so Spears. Like he ain't asked nobody. Yeah, he said TMZ. TMZ yeah, Pops don't keep me around some messy motherfuckers because he know what time it is. He know what blog yeah, is popping. Like, man, we calling straight in. We gonna not beat around the bush. I mean, he's smart though. He he can do ESPN. They's gonna filter. He said, nah. Who go get this yeah. message out? They hey, probably answer that motherfucker like, um, hello? They was, like, man, they was ready for it, man. They was they let him cuss and everything. He was on, <laughs> <laughs> on FaceTime with it. <laughs> right, you ever think about how crazy, how much, like, how many points your pops average in college? Like, playing in college, and you know, like, that shit is wild. What's even crazy, my, my pops, so he didn't play his freshman year. Yeah. He was in grades, and then he had me. I was born the next year. Damn. So they had me at school. And G and Katie offered, I probably should say this on camera, but G and Katie was like, you know, was like, yo, your firstborn son got a scholarship to Purdue too. So oh, I could have went. I could have went, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Damn, with, Matt. Yeah, so. Matt Pater fucked up the bag. That's why y'all lost in the first round. <laughs> but man, it was crazy. It is crazy to look back and see. Like everywhere I go, you know, out here in Indiana, people know Pop's name. Yeah, you know, bro, legend. Like, legend, man. bro. And um, it's been always crazy for me to deal with as growing up, being a third, having the same name as him. And yeah. I used to hate it growing up, but mm -hmm. you know, I hit a certain age, so I was like, whoa, this could actually help me. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Like, sure. I started to really, my pop's cool. Like, I started to really yeah. see how cool my pop's was. We do the same thing. I started to really take it for what it was worth. But I never, like, sometimes I go back and, and, and pop in his old games from Purdue. He dunked on Greg Ostertag. Yeah. And it's crazy to think about number one player in, in the net, you know, college basketball back then. Hundred million and all of that stuff is is crazy, bro. To average that many points in college is crazy. Bro. I don't know why that nigga always just looks super big on TV, bro. Man, he is. Then my brother is because he's six nine like this. And yeah. My brother is six one and just like this. Like, I just got my out his height. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. He split the difference. <laughs> I gotta ask. You know what I'm saying? I know it's a little bit of an age discrepancy, but you know what I'm saying? When did y'all get that one on one on, or did that ever happen? <laughs> I know what happened. Crazy. Somebody asked me this the other day, and they was like, "Yo, when was the first time that you beat your pops one on one?" And I was like, I think it was uh, probably around middle school. And we would go out there in the summer with him for two weeks. And um, <clears throat> so we strapped him up. We in the gym. And I beat. it was like game point. And I'm running around in circles trying to get Pops tired. That's how I figured out I could beat him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm running around in circles like Teague up under the rim, baby. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was somebody from Minnesota going to be like, that's the shit I was talking about. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking circus. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, I hit game when it shot him. I ran out the gym, and uh, I ain't never played him since. I, I, won't, I wouldn't hot. play him since. He was pissed. <laughs> and man, I beat him. That was probably like eighth grade, and I ain't never Damn. played him again. So Ooh. I couldn't get him to eighth grade, though. I mean, shit, you got him at eighth grade. That's up. But still, if we do a shooting competition like that, he is still, he is still give me on one. Like, he still uh, got bro, it. His package was retarded, nah, He bro. was cold. Nigga, that big, bro, moving like that, bro. He was yeah. really unguardable, bro. Swear to God. Damn, that's crazy. Like you said, you got him in the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. Have you got him in 2K yet? Nah, nah. He, he a legend on 2K, nah, 2K man. He, he be locked cold. in on he 2K. He really cold. My Oscar, yeah. <laughs> he played 2K more than me, and I play 2K. You ducking that smoke? Nah, I ain't never ducking on red. <laughs> ducking that smoke? <laughs> ducking on red. But his, his pops play 2K like a mom. That's hard. And I, at that time, I wasn't playing 2K when I lived in Atlanta. And he was on it. Yeah, like, yeah. It. You want to play? I'm like, hell no. You like, you serious about that? <laughs> he said, he, uh, he got us our first PlayStation, me and my brother. And that's yeah. how we been, you know, either somebody go Xbox or PlayStation growing up. And then we went straight PlayStation. i never forget. He walked in with PlayStation. We could never beat him. And that's how he just he left it at that. <laughs> you got to keep something over your kids. Like, you know what I'm you saying? You're going to notice it. I feel like every dad, they got yeah. it. You got to have something over your kids. Like, yeah. I don't care what you do. You're not going to fuck with me at this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. think my dad got me nothing like that. 
<laughs> I don't put that on Pop T. Nah, he like better that. than me at pool. He better than me at pool. He better at you at golf too, bro. Nigga, I don't like play golf. But you went out there. You're right. <laughs> you went out there. You're I like, could be better than him if I start like, playing. I can't bro. wait till that nigga come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> he crazy. Oh, oh man. Hey, first and foremost, man, we got to say congratulations. I got one more thing. Oh, your graduation. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Take oh. over. Like, what's that? When you made it to the league, what's that league moment for you? Like, off off the court. Like, we, you know, everybody go out that first time. You be like, damn, I'm really in the league because that dude just spent $50,000. Or, you know what I mean? Y'all was in Minnesota, yeah. so y'all was young. So, like, did y'all have a moment like that? Man, well, first, I it was a moment. I think it was my fourth year, and I was playing with the Pistons and the BG, Blake Griffin. Damn. This is, I'm then I get to my rookie first, yeah. but BG, we was uh we all went out to the club, you know, everybody on the team. We was out when I forgot what game it was. We won, we feeling good. And Blake, <laughs> like, yeah, come out, we're gonna go here. So we all go. BG ain't never show up. So we all in the locker room the next day, everybody tying their shoe, like looking around at this nigga, like, do he know? Yeah. Man, we ran up the bill so bad that day. Everybody yeah. had ace of spades, the Lighting up, <laughs> bottles lighting up, everything. I think it said I'm bottles lighting up. Disco ball coming down full of money, everything. In Detroit? Man, everything. I forgot where we was. Oh, I was going to say, oh, y'all was clowning. I forgot where we was, but we came back to Detroit and we was in practice the next day and we looked around in the locker room and I was just looking at B. He sat next to me. I'm looking at him like, and he looked like, the fuck y'all looking at? <laughs> you know how he talked? Yeah, like, yeah, cool. yeah. Fuck y'all Everybody was like, nothing, don't worry about it. <laughs> Ain't nobody ever say nothing to him. This is probably the first time yeah. you're going to find out about it. Yeah, probably $100,000 bill. Damn. Damn. So the shit was just on him that night. Ace of Spades. Everything was on him. You know, you play with a good vet like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, come to the club. You know, he had his card or whatever down, the whole situation. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, that's we hard. We just had fun. We didn't have to worry about <laughs> nothing. I ain't, I ain't get one of them. <laughs> he got a, he got a, a unbelievable Williams. bag for that. Yeah. Mo Williams, though. He used to give me his per diem every flight. Yeah. He was second round, so he knew what it was like. Yeah. And it was like a hundred, it was like 125 or whatever it was. But for him to give that to me every flight, I was like, you know, 100 yeah, coming yeah, into the yeah. league. I'm like, whoa, like this per diem? I'm like, whoa, every flight. And you know, we go on a LA trips two weeks. Two, it's like two bands grand, in a wallet yeah. in the little bag we get. So I'm yeah. like, whoa. Tough. Every time, every flight, Mo Williams. Right. Shout out to Mo Williams. Yeah. Never forget, he came to Baker's Life and gave us 55. Man. Probably, he was uh, in Minnesota. Yeah, that's the team. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you was, was on the team. Yeah. That's the team I was on. I, I, Towards no, the I could not believe it. I was just like, what the fuck? Yeah. 55? It was random too. It was a weeknight. All, all pick and rolls. It was the craziest <laughs> shit ever. Yeah, I remember I that. He was Mid-ray killing. Oh, my God. He was killing. And probably the last story I got for y'all, uh, KD. I remember I got invited to the KD camp as mm-hmm. in high school. You wanted to make it as a wing. So I'm like, um, I think I, I I faced him, and everybody was scared to guard him. And you see KD, he's seven foot. He's skinny as hell. I'm like, I could lock him up. You know, I'm 19. I'm like, man, I'm pushing him over. Because at back that time, going into Michigan, I was like, strong. yeah. Man, KD came out there, hit me with like a like a stiff arm layup, threw me back so bad in high school. <laughs> I was as a senior. I'm like, nah, this grown man strength. So I messaged him <laughs> on Twitter and was like, you know, I'm going to see you in the league. And you know, I still got the tweet to this day. But he ended up t- tweeting me back on DM, like, I see you at the top, bro. And I, to that day, I matched up against him and uh with the Warriors, and he came at my neck three or four times straight. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yo, that's probably the toughest matchup that I ever had was nah. KD, seven foot, dribble, shoot right over you. And shit, you got it, you got it, Brian, you got it, Kawhi. Mm-hmm. You said KD was that nigga that you yeah. just yeah. like everybody yeah. Christmas, bro. Don't even Man. feel no way like this. <laughs> that was gonna happen. Hey, who like the man. least expected but person I, that you was hard? Like you had to guard it. Nobody would think like mm-hmm. man, he would really like that. Like we know yeah. everybody in the league is good. Oh well, Luca. They, they, we know he liked that. But, yeah. You know, then Luca a couple years ago, we didn't know everything about his game. We just knew he was coming from you know overseas. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Man, he started hitting me with the slow to quick, and you know some of them pass the ball and go cut off of it. Some of the like Euro League yeah. stuff. I was like, yo, he, he cold. Because he just looked like he ain't about to do some of that stuff. But um, Shifty. Aaron Aflalo, my rookie year. Yes. <laughs> they gassed me up to come into the game. I had never, I hadn't got in the game like that yet. And I Speak high. Flip Saunders had, uh, he had just got sick. RP Flip. And um, he had just got sick. And I think uh, Sam, Sam. Mitchell. Sam, Sam Mitchell's Mitchell a cover. Took over. He gave me my shot. Sam was crazy as hell. He used to make you do all type of drills 50 times, 
yelling at you. Yeah. I get in the game, I sub in. He was gassing me up all morning. Aaron the Flower hit three straight, three straight corner threes on me, fading away like Joy. You know, he just yeah, thinking Joy yeah, like Kobe. Like, like oh, it was cold. Bro. Hit, DJ used to hate on that nigga. And bro. I still do. He thought he was Kobe. Man, for sure. He hit me with all that work that day. I was like, yo. He really liked that. He's yeah, nice, bro. He <laughs> was, he had bro. Me think he was like that, T. <laughs> bro, 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 bro. Three, t- three straight times. Right. So that probably that was probably the guy. I was like, yo, like, all right. I didn't know he was like that. I'm yeah. an Aaron Fall hater, but he always averaged 19.6 <laughs> points a game, no matter where he was at. I told you. He used to hit. I'm like, bro, he's really like that, bro. He can hoop. I think who cooked me like that. Damn. Uh, Nano DeColo. Whatever the fuck that nigga now. He cooked me one game. He would play for the Spurs. Who? His nigga name was like. Nando. I remember you talking about Colo. He wore number twenty five. I ain't never forget. He was wearing number twenty five because I thought this nigga was trash. <laughs> Boy, he was terrible. <laughs> he was going to work. What I'm year like, was this? It was probably like my fourth, third, fourth, fifth oh, year. Oh, oh damn! It was that late. In your, uh, he gave you work. I just didn't respect him. Like I was waiting for Tony Parker. I'm like, man, what fuck Tony something back in? Wow. And this nigga was killing. That's my time. That's yeah, crazy. he was going to work. Hey, I seen you with some sneaky dunks though. What was your probably favorite dunk that you had? And what was going <laughs> through your mind? As a point guard? Because I always wonder, as a point guard, what's running through your mind to dunk on somebody? Nah, my favorite dunk, I dunked on Ray Allen. <laughs> what happened? I seen after? that one too, that Ray was. Yeah, I only like that because KG was just talking so bad yeah. to me. And when I dunked on him, I'm like, bitch, I like, <laughs> <laughs> Then I airballed the game winner. <laughs> that nigga KG followed me to the tunnel, nigga. Don't ever fuck with the basketball guy. <laughs> like pointing at me and shit. I'm trying to hey, run that's to how the, he is, though. I'm trying to run to the that's back of the tunnel, like, oh, my fault, y'all. Joe, like, man, why the fuck would you shoot that? <laughs> Everybody mad at me that you just hear KG. <laughs> Dumb ass nigga. <laughs> Sad ass nigga. I'm like, oh, shit. He hit you at Eric with that shit. Hey, he was doing that to Eric Gordon was so crazy. Yeah, he was doing Trash ass nigga. I forgot about that, man. Then I jumped with that nigga out yelled at him. He's like, you don't fuck with the basketball guy. Sad as fuck. <laughs> you ain't shit. Don't nobody respect you. And then we played him in the playoffs that year, and he wouldn't say my name. Like, he wouldn't acknowledge me. Like, you know how you go shake niggas' hand before the game? I'm like, yo, what up? You know, Rondo, cool, all these niggas yeah. cool. I went to go reach for him. That nigga just started, started pacing. I'm like, ah, oh, damn, fuck you. So the first game, I had a really good game. And uh, the media was like, yeah, the, the T guy, he was really getting in the lane, you know, penetrate. He was like, who? Who? I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, ah, oh, that nigga going to do me like that. <laughs> like, I fuck with Ticket. Like, why you doing me like that? Yeah. Who? And then when he played with Mook, uh, he finally, when Mook played with him, he, he finally told me, like, yeah, I fuck with your brother, he cool. Like, That's all I ever wanted to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that nigga just was like, fuck you, nigga. <laughs> like, he was so crazy. <laughs> that nigga barked at me in the game, bro. He got on all Man. fours and barked. What? What's what? what? We, we jumping the ball, nigga. And he got, like, I was bringing the rock up, nigga, and it was like about the, Al Horford was about to run up and set the screen. Yeah. He just didn't follow Al down. And they just got all four start barking. I'm like, man, who is this nigga, bro? This nigga wow. can't be real. But. First time I met him, he was in the dark, complete dark, like the gym. <laughs> just yelling, same thing, just yelling. And then he seen me, he was like, dog, because that's what he called my mom. Yeah. Dog, dog. I've been waiting to talk to you. That nigga <laughs> crazy. Like, man, you got chills. <laughs> First time as a rookie. But, in the dark. Uh, didn't say nothing, because at that time it was on the news, like, yo, he throwing rookies phones in the toilet. So I asked her straight up, like, yo, me and Zach asked him, like, Zach Levine, we like, yo, you throwing niggas' phones in the toilets, bro? <laughs> like, we cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That's when he was back mentoring up there, wasn't yeah. he? Like, he was, like, helping with yeah. Cassie. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Damn, they had KG like you down his house? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. His last year, yeah. I didn't know that. Now, he was more like a parole officer. <laughs> yeah. Damn. That nigga ticket crazy, man. Crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, but man, G, we appreciate you sliding once again. Sure. Congratulations, sure. man. Sure. On the graduation. Looking forward to you get back on the court, man. You know what I'm saying? Get this rehab popping. Absolutely, man. Just whatever you do, just don't go back to the Pacers, man. We want you to thrive, man. Get away from the Pacers (laughs) and get away from Minnesota, man. Yeah, don't go it's to the crib, man. It's the crib. the crib. Can't like do the crib that, like that. Man. I want the best it's for you. Always, guys. Option always open. I, I keep it. Hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, for that man. Yeah. yeah, side G for sure. <laughs> oh no, I'm something out the gate. Option <laughs> always open. We'll see what happens, man. No, I'm excited to get back to it though. For sure, like, share, subscribe, all that good shit. We'll see y'all next time.